Good day viewers at home. Welcome to Home Learning. Today you'll be with uh, Mr. Damini and we'll be looking at a uh, high school mathematics that is will be um, discussing some questions which are based on our high school uh, syllabus. So this is aimed at helping uh, those learners at home so that they can actually uh, learn how to answer exam style uh, questions. Right now, without uh, wasting a lot of time, we can have a look at our first question here. Uh, the first question reads as follows. The Martinez family travels by car to sea town. The distance is 92 kilometers and the journey takes one hour 15, that is one hour 25 minutes. The family leaves home at 7.50, write down the time they arrive at Sitao. So here, uh, looking at this question, it's basically based on uh, speed. So here we are given the distance covered, or the distance between the two towns, or it's that uh, 92. So it's 92 uh, kilometers, and the time taken or it's actually one hour, 25 minutes. So basically here, or you can add that one hour, 25 minutes on 7.50 so that you, you get the time at which uh, they arrive at a uh, sit town there. So here you'll say oh, 0, oh, 0.7.50 plus so you add that one hour 25 minutes and therefore you'll get or uh, that value of this is a uh, five this is seven and uh, this will be seven plus one which is eight so looking at the time there so it's like it's eight hours 75 minutes so it will take an hour there because uh, one hour is actually 60 minutes. So therefore, from that 75, you'll take away that hour there and add it to that eight. So therefore, this will result to, so if you say 75 uh, minus uh, uh, that uh, hour, which is 60 minutes, so we remain with only uh, 15 minutes. So therefore, the time here, so you add the hour to that eight. So the time here adds up to nine uh, 15. So we have nine 15 uh, hours there. So it's nine 15 hours. So that's the time at which they're going to arrive at at uh, a sea town there. So you have added the one hour 25 minutes to the original, uh, that is the time when the family left, which is 0750. Uh, so you get 915. Then we can have a look at uh, the second part there. Uh, where you have to calculate the average speed for the journey. So your formula for getting average speed, so your speed, uh, your speed here is equal to distance over time there. So the speed is the total distance covered divided by the time taken. So the speed it will be equal to the total distance covered. So the distance between the two towns is that 
92 kilometers divided by then the time taken to travel between the two towns is actually or uh, that one hour 25 minutes but then you can convert that one hour 25 minutes uh, to hours so this will be an hour and 25 minutes out of 60 because one hour is 60 minutes so the 25 minutes it's actually 25 out of 60 in in hours there so that's uh, the time taken uh, in hours then if you divide that or uh, that is uh, 92 uh, divided by uh, one hour uh, 25 minutes so that's uh, equal to 64 and 16 over 17 so that's uh, the speed there so it's 64 and 16 over 17 in kilometers per kilometers per hour there yes so now we can have a look at uh, uh, the third part of the question here so it's during the journey the family stops for 10 minutes calculate 10 minutes as a percentage of 1 hour 25 minutes so this a uh, question on percentages so therefore um, what you can do here you first have to convert that two minutes there so this is 60 minutes plus 25 minutes so 25 minutes so you get uh, uh, that will be 85 minutes then the question says calculate 10 minutes as a percentage of 1 hour 25 minutes so therefore you're going to say the 10 minutes out of 85 minutes then you have to write that as a percentage so multiply that by uh, your hundred percent so if you work out that uh, you'll find that that will be 11 and 13 over 17 uh, that's your answer there in percentages so it's 11 13 over 17 percent right then uh, you can look at the next part which is 92 kilometers is 15 percent more than the distance from C town to D city calculate the distance from C town to D city there so you are given that this uh, distance 92 it's 15 percent more so therefore you can say 92 kilometers that's equivalent to that's equivalent to 115 percent so that 92 kilometers is 15 percent more than the distance you want to calculate so in this case you want to calculate your hundred percent there which is the distance we want to calculate there so it's equivalent to X so you can use a reverse percentage to solve this uh, problem here 
So therefore, if you cross and multiply there, you get uh, 115x equal to 9200. Then if you divide by 115 both side, that is 115 here over 115, then you get uh, the value of x, which is actually the distance we want to uh, calculate. So you do that division, you get uh, that distance, which is 80. So your answer is 80 uh, kilometers there. So that's how you solve this problem. So you need to recall that the original value there or the original or the actual distance you want to calculate it's always the hundred percent and then that ninety two percent or that ninety two kilometers is actually hundred and fifteen percent because it's fifteen percent more than the actual value or the actual that is the actual distance you want to uh, calculate. So the next question is the Martinez family spends one fifty dollars in the ratio fuel is to meals is to gifts which is eleven is to sixteen is to three show that fifteen dollars is spent on gifts. So in this case looking at this ratio here actually the amount spent uh, on gifts is that three there. So you work out the total ratio that is eleven plus sixteen plus three. So that's total ratio is actually equal to thirty. So the total ratio is thirty. So you can then calculate the three over thirty times the total amount I spent which is 150 so if we work out that or uh, cancel there so remain with your 15 dollars so that's how you can actually show that the amount spent is um, that 15 uh, dollars Okay, we can look at the next part there, which is uh, the family buys two gifts. The first gift costs $8.25. Find the ratio costs of gifts is to, that is the cost of first gift is to the cost of second gift. So here, looking at this um, equation, so the total amount spent on gifts is that fifteen dollars. Uh, so, and then the first gift costs that eight dollars 25 cents so if you say the total amount which is 15 uh, minus the 8.25 so you'll get the cost of the second gift which is equivalent to 6.75 uh, there so if you are saying the ratio cost of first gift is to cost of second gift, that means you have the 
two five is to six point seven five. Then simplifying that uh, ratio, so that's eight twenty five is to six seventy five. Then working out uh, that in its simplest form, so we can divide maybe by twenty five. So if you divide by twenty five here you look at the 33 is to 27 which simplifies to 11 is to 9. So that's the ratio in its simplest form there. So that's what you're going to, uh, to get. So the second question is a question on transformations. It's a question on transformations. Or uh, here uh, on this grid, you draw the translation of triangle X by vector negative 11, uh, negative 1. Then. So uh, coming to the grid, uh, you can look at X. X is there, so that's our triangle uh, X there. So the translation vector is actually 11, negative 11, negative 1. So we can uh, work it out. So counting the number of uh, squares moved uh, horizontally. So that's represented by that negative 11. And then that negative 1, the number of units moved uh, vertically. So in this case, it's negative 11. So therefore, you can count the number of squares to the left from this point. Uh, so it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, so your negative 11. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then one step. So the image of that point is here. So the image of this point, it's at negative 7, 7. And looking at this point, um, that is 8, 2. So the image is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then negative 1. So the image will be at negative 3, 1. And looking at this point uh, there, which is 8, 8. So the image will be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, then negative 1. So you can then join those uh, three points there to get uh, the image of uh, that triangle that triangle x after that uh, translation so that will be your image maybe x prime there then we can have a look at uh, the second part there of the question Let's draw the enlargement of triangle y with center negative 6, negative 4, and scale factor half. So now you have to enlarge this triangle uh, Y. The center of enlargement is at negative 6, negative 4. So your center here is at negative 6, uh, negative 4. So that's your center of enlargement. And the scale factor is half. So a scale factor of enlargement, it's always the distance of the image from the center of enlargement over the distance of the object. So looking at the object here, so it's only uh, if we consider that point there. So looking at this point that is negative 2 comma negative 4, it's only 4 units away from that uh, center there. 
So, meaning that if you say the four units uh, times uh, the scale factor, which is one over two, you get two units there. So therefore, the image of this point will be there, two units away from the center there. Similarly, looking at this point here, which is two negative four, it's only eight units away from the center there, so its image must be four units away. So it will be negative two, uh, negative four. Then if we look at this uh, point here, then its image, we can work out the vector from the center to that point there. So that column vector will be four units to the right and then six units upwards. So the vector is actually uh, four a six. Then we multiply that by the scale factor, which is one over two, so that we get the position of uh, our image. So or if you work it out there, half of four, that results to two, and then a half of uh, six, that's three. So that's the position vector of the image point from that center there. So from the center, you can then count the number of squares to the left, so it's two, then three upwards. So your image lies at that point, so that that column vector, it's your two, three there. Then you can join, uh, so you can join these points to get your, your image after an enlargement with scale factor one over two. So that will be your y, uh, y prime there. So it's the image of that uh, triangle uh, y there. Then now you can have a look at uh, the next part. Yes, so the next question here is still on uh, transformations. So in this case, we are given uh, those triangles on that grid. So it's described fully the single transformation that maps triangle X onto triangle Z. So looking at your triangle X here to Z, so those are the two triangles there. And this is your X, uh, and that's your, your triangle Z down there. Yes, so if you look at uh, the two uh, triangles, you should see that actually uh, that line Y is equal to one is is actually your, your mirror line. So you can then describe that transformation from X to Z. At uh, describing it here, you will say it's a reflection, a reflection on the line Y is equal to one. So it's a reflection on the line y is equal to one. Then the transformation that maps a triangle x onto y there. So if you look at the grid x onto y, you can have a look at the grid there. So that's your triangle x onto y there. So if you look at the two triangles, you can try to join the corresponding points uh, here, uh, joining those the corresponding points. So if you join uh, the corresponding uh, points here,
joining those corresponding points. So if you join those corresponding points, they actually meet at that point 3,2 there. So in this case, so if you look at that image, so you can see that uh, it's actually an enlargement. So we'll say it's an enlargement. An enlargement, uh, the scale factor is negative one. So your image is actually upside down there. So that means uh, the scale factor is actually oh, negative. And then the center, the center of enlargement is the point there, three, two. the center is at oh, 3, uh, 2 there. So you can say that transformation or oh, it's uh, an enlargement center 3, 2 and the scale factor oh, it's negative 1 or you can use your tracing paper there you should find that you can also describe this as a rotation with the center 3, 2, and the angle, it's uh, 180 degrees. So it's a half turn about that point uh, 3, 2 there. So both answers will be correct. Then triangle X onto W, triangle X onto W here. So looking at your X, so triangle X is there onto a W. So that big triangle there is mapped actually onto that smaller triangle just, uh, just there. Yes. So in this case, uh, looking at this triangle X mapped to W, you should be able to see that basically the figure is actually stretched that is triangle X is actually stretched to get a triangle or W. So looking at uh, the two triangles, so you can describe that as a stretch. But then this stretch is actually perpendicular to that uh, Y axis there. So the Y axis will be your invariant line. And then we can work out uh, that uh, stretch factor there. So what is the stretch factor? So the stretch factor in this case, or it will be the distance of the image. Uh, you can pick one point here, say that point there. Uh, we're picking that point up there, which is at 8.8. Eight. So it's the distance of the image from the invariant line divided by the distance of the object from the invariant line. So this point corresponds with that point. So the distance of the image, so your factor will be uh, the distance of the image. So this one is only uh, eight units over oh your image is not eight units. So your image is that triangle W. So your image will be only uh, only four units. So that's the image, four units away from that invariant line over the object there, which is eight units away. So your factor will be 0 0.5. So that will be your um, stretch factor there, 0 0.5. So uh, you can describe that as a stretch.
So it's a stretch. with uh, the stretch factor equal to 0 0.5 and the line x is equal to 0 that's the invariant 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 line so that's the description there. So it's a stretch with stretch factor 0 0.5 with the line x is equal to 0 being the invariant line. Then you can have a look at uh, part C there where you find the matrix that represent the transformation uh, above, that is the transformation in part B above there. So here we are looking for the matrix which represent that uh, stretch there, a stretch with a stretch factor of 0 0.5 and the x-axis, that is the y-axis being the invariant line. So in this case, looking at this, uh, normally uh, if you look at the identity matrix, it's one, zero, zero, one there. So that's your identity matrix. So if the transformation is a stretch, basically what you should know is that a that leading diagonal of the identity matrix, so you can either change, you can either replace that one there, or this one down here, uh, by that stretch factor there, which is 0 0.5. So in this case, uh, so if the x-axis is invariant, then this column here uh, will not change. But if the y-axis is invariant, so that's the column which cannot uh, actually uh, change there. So in this case, your invariant line is x equal to 0, which is the y-axis. So therefore, it's that one which will replace by uh, that uh, stretch factor there. So your matrix, therefore, will be that 0 0.5. And down here, you'll have the 0. And here, you'll have the 0. There, you'll have 1. So only that 1 there is replaced by that a factor of 0 0.5. And this column, 0, 1. It's not changed because um, the, the invariant line is the um, y-axis there. We can look at uh, this question, uh, which is a question on is volume, area, and perimeter. So the question reads, a metal cuboid has a volume of 1080 cubic centimeters and a mass of eight kilograms. Calculate the mass of one cubic centimeter of the metal. Give your answer in grams. So in this case, what you can do, because you know that 10, eight, zero, cubic centimeters has a mass of 8,000 grams. So 8 kilograms is equal to 8,000 grams. So in this case, you are required to calculate the mass of one cubic centimeter of this metal. So one cubic centimeter will be equivalent to x grams there. Then you can work out uh, the value of x there. So we'll have 1080 times x is equal to 800 or 8,000. Then your x 
will be that 8,000 divided by 1080. So you answer there. Oh. So your answer will be 7.4. Zero, seven, four, and so on. So you can write that correct to three significant figures, which is seven point four one grams. So that's the mass of one cubic centimeter of the metal in grams. Then the base of the base of the cuboid measures twelve centimeters by 10 centimeters, calculate the height of the cuboid. So in this case, uh, you have to use that equation, volume of the cuboid is equal to length times width times uh, the height there. So in this case, you want to calculate the height there. So making that h the subject, so we'll divide by length times breadth. So we'll get your h is equal to uh, the volume divided by the length times breadth. So your volume is 1080 over your length is 12 by 10 there, which is your breadth. Then if you work out that height, calculating that height, they will get will get um, a nine there. So the value you get uh, that's equivalent to nine centimeters. So that's the height of a disc cuboid. Then the next part of the question is that the cuboid is melted down and made into a sphere with radius r centimeters. Calculate the value of r. So you can use that equation for getting uh, the volume there. So volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed there. So in this case, you want to calculate r. You are given the volume because the volume of this sphere will be equivalent to the volume of the cuboid. So your V is that 1080 cubic centimeters there. So that's your volume. And then your R there, so if your V is 4 over 3 pi R cubed, So V is 4 over 3 pi R cubed. Then you can make R the subject there. So we'll just multiply this by 3. Multiply that side by 3. So you get 3V is equal to cancel the 3. You get 4 pi R cubed. Then dividing by 4 pi both sides, dividing by 4 pi, so this results to r cubed equal to 3v over 4 pi. So that's your r cubed. And then to remove that cube there, you can take cube roots, both sides. So your R will be the cube root of three times the volume here, which is your 1080 is three times the volume over 4 pi. So that's how you can get uh, your radius there.
So working out this uh, using your calculator there, you'll get 6.3647. And you can then round off that maybe to three significant figures, which gives six point three six. So that's the radius R for this uh, uh, sphere. So we can have a look at this question here. Calculate the surface area of the sphere. Calculate the surface area of the sphere. So the equation we use to calculate the surface area of a sphere, so is that 4 pi r squared. So your sphere with that radius r, its surface area will be 4 pi r squared. So we have to recall that equation. Or in fact, that equation will actually be given in that particular uh, question. So in this case, your area there is 4 pi r uh, squared, uh, which is equal to, so you can substitute the value of r. We've calculated the radius of the sphere, and we say it, it's 6.36. 6.36. So it's 4 pi times that 6.36 squared there. So punching these values in your calculator, uh, the value there will be approximately 508 square centimeters if you are rounding off your answer to three significant figures. So that will be 508 or square centimeters. Then you can have a look at uh, part D there. A larger sphere has radius R. The surface area of this sphere is double the surface area of the sphere with radius R in part C find the value of r over r. So looking at this question here, so it's like we are given the ratio, that ratio of areas. So we are given the ratio of the areas of the two spheres. So we have a larger sphere with a radius, capital letter R, and a smaller sphere with radius, small letter r there. So the ratio of their areas is one is two, a two there. So the larger sphere, the surface area there is double the area of that smaller sphere with radius uh, r. So in this case, uh, the ratio of areas is one is to two. So you can use that ratio of areas uh, to work out the ratio of sides or the ratio of lengths. So, so the ratio of sides or lengths will be equal to the square root of that ratio there, which is the square root of 1 is 2, the square root of uh, 2, so which is 1 is 2, uh, root 2. So in this case, we are saying r, which is uh, the radius for the larger sphere divided by the radius for the smaller sphere. So your answer there, so your r over r, it will be that square root of 2 divided by 1. So your answer there will be just uh, the square root of 2, which is approximately uh, one point. Uh, four one when rounded off to uh, three uh, significant uh, figures.
uh, that's all uh, we had in home learning for today. Viewers at home, thank you so much for your time until uh, we meet again and enjoy uh, more mathematics. <laughs>